Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. Ancient history. My favourite subject. Or, well it's my favourite subject but maybe Mr Goodman, my high school ancient history teacher, would be surprised to hear that because if he remembers me, he would remember me as the girl who sat in the back row laughing a lot with my friends about Herodotus's nipples. However, I've moved past that. I've outgrown it. Nowadays, I have a history degree, a master's degree in fact. And now when I laugh at Herodotus's nipples, it is as a fully qualified historian. My degree. I know what you're thinking. Why is it gold? I do have a paper one. And this one's actually my undergraduate one. But I like that it's gold because I feel like it gives off this sort of big rich energy that I'm really trying to manifest into my life right now. So I just like this one. I can't wait to have somewhere to hang it. But for now, I'll put it back in its box. Anyway, today's video is about MyTrueAncestry.com. Of course, this is not MyTrueAncestry.com. This is a print from Raphael's School of Athens. But MyTrueAncestry.com is an exciting, amazing website. And I know that the rest of you history nerds are going to be really excited when I show it to you. So My True Ancestry will take the DNA that you upload. So if you've tested with Ancestry or another company, you upload it there and it will tell you what ancient populations you match with. So I'm not talking about your regular ethnicity estimate. I've done those videos, I'll link them above or below or somewhere if you want to watch them. This one is so much cooler because it's about ancient history. So it'll take um, archaeological remains that have been discovered, for example, like Viking graves or, um, you know, ancient Greece or uh, Egypt. It also has um, Australian Aboriginal and sort of the Americas and anywhere you can think of ancient DNA from ancient cultures. So you can find out where your ancient ancestors were from. All right, so I'm not going to be able to show it to you here. So I'm going to cut to my computer screen and show you my results so you can see what you get. So you head to mytrueancestry.com and here's the homepage and you can sign up in the top right hand corner. So I just wanted to show you they have actually different levels of um, memberships or subscriptions. So Commoner is free. You can sign up for free and you can use quite a lot of these tools for free. So I highly recommend you start off just with the free version because it'll give you a taste of what it's like. Um, for mine, I've actually upgraded it to night. So you'll be able to see with my results, this is what you can get for a night kind of um, subscription. So once you upload your kit, which you'll have to get from Ancestry or from wherever you've got your DNA, it'll process. It takes about 10 minutes and then you'll get your results. You can give it a name. I just called mine Vanessa. And then you can see below there's a bunch of headings and those are going to be all the categories we can just open up. So the first one is my ancient populations. These are my closest ancient populations, Saxon and Frank, which is super cool. So as you can see below it, you've got Saxon and Frank, then you've got Celt and Frank, Viking Danish and Frank, Viking Danish and Saxon, and it just goes on. So those are the genetic distances. If you remember my Jed match video, that goes more into what these genetic distances mean, but suffice to say, um, the smaller the distance, the closer the match. So my most likely match is Saxon and Frank. Then we can go to the ancient sample breakdown. That gives me all of the um, regions that I had a match with, which is quite a lot, as you can see, there's all sorts. And then there's a breakdown by era, which personally I find really confusing. <laughs> so I'm not gonna go into that. The next thing is these archaeogenetic matches, forgive my pronunciation there. Um, these are a whole list of different sort of um, ancient DNA samples that I have matches with. 
So each of those sort of numbered ones is a different um, individual sort of set of remains that have been dug up. And it's telling me how um, close my genetic distance is to that person. And then it also has like a little percentage, uh, like how, um, where I compare uh, against other users. So how close I match to this person as co comparing to other people who've uploaded their DNA. Does that make sense? I hope it does. <laughs> so I'll just show you um, if I open up just one of them as an example. So this is the copper age, whatever, whatever. Um, and I could open that up and see the info about it. A lot of those um, extra things to click on are higher sort of um, subscriptions. So I can't look at everything, but I can look at quite a bit here. Um, this section I don't think is available to the commoner, but the earlier stuff was. Okay, next uh, I'm looking by era. So if I want to look at the, I think it was the Neolithic I just passed, and then the early Bronze Age. So it's telling me if I look at each sort of era where sort of I'm matching with people. So these are the remains that were discovered from that era that I match from. So it kind of can tell me where my ancestors might have been at a particular time. So for example, their Roman Age mine are very sort of Celtic. Obviously I'm not a Roman. <laughs> Dark Ages, Saxons, medieval Vikings, a few other things. But yeah, it's interesting to get an idea of where your people were in particular eras. I don't have any from the Americas, some people will. Okay, this bit is showing me the shared DNA segments that I have with some of these people. So this, you know, one for example, this Bronze Age dude, I've got a few different chromosomes and then a few little segments on those chromosomes. If you remember my video on DNA Painter, that goes a little bit into what the, those little sort of chromosome segments are, but it basically means that, you know, on that chromosome for me, there's a little piece that matches to my, you know, the, the same chromosome on this other person. So as you can see, some of mine are hidden and I have to upgrade to actually see it, but I can still see quite a few with the night sort of subscription. So that's cool. All right, now I'm looking at my deep dive results. Those are a little bit more specific than the other results. And by specific, I mean um, accurate. So um, they're similar to the other ones, but the accuracy is just slightly higher. All right, and these are my modern population estimates. That's very similar to what they offer on GEDmatch. So they're just condensing it. If I was one sort of ethnicity, that's what they estimate it would be. And they've got a little map showing how close I am to those. Now I'm gonna look at my time-lapse maps, which are cool. So it'll show me where my ancestors were on the map during particular sort of time periods. So um, these are the um, sites where those remains were discovered. So yeah, I think it's, um, I'll just show you Bronze Age, Iron Age. I think that's a really cool way of sort of just visualizing where your ancestors were moving around sort of. And then we've got my closest matches from ancient times. It's just a zoomed in sort of map showing me where my closest matches were. And it's a very specific region of the world. Obviously, you know, my ancestors were from a specific area. They weren't all over the world. <laughs> they were primarily, I guess, Western Europe and Scandinavia and the British Isles and stuff like that. Okay, Y DNA. This is crazy, right? Because I'm a female, I don't have Y DNA. What this um, technology does is it takes the Y DNA from a lot of my matching samples and it just uses an algorithm to sort of estimate if I had Y DNA, what would it be sort of? <laughs> so um, these are just my close matches. Uh, that's the deep dive, which is once again more accurate um, or, you know, the algorithm's a little bit sort of tighter.
MTDNA. Obviously, I've done my, uh, not obviously, I don't know if I've told you. I've done my MTDNA. I should do a video on it. I'm actually a H. So that explains why my H group there is so much bigger. So I do have matches in some of the other groups, which, you know, that's fine. But I'm not surprised that the Y group is the biggest. As you can see, some of them are hidden and you would need to upgrade, which, you know, but... I still get quite a lot without that once again. So it depends on how much you want to invest if you want every single little detail or if you're just happy to get a bid. All right, so then onto the MTDNA deep dive. Once again, more accurate. Obviously, there's less of them just purely because it's more accurate. But um, yeah, it's really interesting to see. These are my matching, um, the people that I match with. So then it's the um, distribution, all the samples that match me, and then you can drag it down and it's telling me which royalty that I um, share my haplogroups with, or in the Y case, my estimated haplogroups. So if you're a male, apparently these estimates are quite good. They're very accurate. Um, if you're a female, once again, it's you know putting it together. But if you just hover over those, it'll tell you which... Um, royalty you match with so Scottish royalty actually doesn't surprise me at all because I know that I have Stuart ancestry from the Royal House of Stuart so I am not surprised that I have quite a lot of matches there but um, yeah if you drag down there are all sorts so obviously the royalty feature is just once again it's super fun <laughs> um, who doesn't want to know what royalty they share some bits of DNA with. So if I click on this Y DNA distribution, I can see um, the exact haplogroups. So if you want to see who matches you from a very particular haplogroup, you can do that. And then I can go to the mtDNA one, which is the maternal um, ancestry, the mitochondrial DNA. And once again, like, well, I've got a lot of different ones there. <laughs> um, but it's going to do the same thing. I can select a certain one if I want. I can drag it down. I can look at all the different um, royal, oopsie. Look at all the different um, royal sort of houses that I have matches with, the Romanovs, the Greek royalty. I mean, they're so cool. Like, Obviously, there's heaps of them there. This would be the H group because uh, I already knew that I was a H, which, you know, helps, I guess. But um, I know that all these people are also H's. Sorry, that's probably driving American um, watches crazy. I think you guys say H, H, not H. So... Too bad I'm going to keep saying H, <laughs> but I'm aware that it's probably driving you nuts. Sorry. <laughs> All right, so this is the DNA spotlight sort of section. Um, obviously, I don't match with this guy, but you can click on different people and or different groups and see how you match with them. So on the Roman gladiator section, I do match some of them, so they're obviously Celtic um, Brit British gladiators. Um, see, there's an Egyptian slash Near East one at the bottom that I don't match with. Ancient Britain. As you can see at the bottom underneath the picture, they have a bit of a description of what that sort of um, means, like what period they're talking about or what person they're talking about. Um, so yeah, it's a bit of an explanation about who that is and how closely I match them on the side and how that compares to other people. 
And as you can see in the blue, the deep dive thing, that's just, um, like I said, the accuracy is a bit higher of the deep dive. So I match with a few of these guys. Okay, I think this one's my favorite, the Shield Maiden. I mean, is that not the coolest thing ever? So I'm super impressed by that one. I'm sorry if you're not, um, if you don't share her DNA. <laughs> no offense. You're still cool. Some Viking ones. Yay, I love Vikings. Revolutionary France, like look at that guy's outfit. How are we not relate? Like we have to be, right? I wish people still dress like that. If you want to, just go ahead and dress like that, especially if you're a guy. And the last one, match with one of them. Just one, I think, yeah. So as you can see, there's other ones um, that I don't have matches with. So a lot of these are regions of the world. I'm like devastated that some of these Hellenic ones I don't match with because as you know, I love Greece. So I'm a bit sad about that. But yeah, these are different groups that I have no match with, different regions of the world, obviously. Mummies, like damn, Egypt, that would have been so cool. <laughs> anyway, good luck, maybe you'll match with them. Okay, this part is the timeline. As you can see, a lot of it says upgrade needed, so um, I can't see all of it, but I do love a timeline. This is the full detailed timeline, which is amazing. I think you actually have to have the upgrade to have this. So my one's night and I can see quite a lot of this now. Um, but I love the idea of the timeline because you can look at the regions that these people are from and look across sort of history, across periods of time. And it tells you where your ancestors were at that time in history. So I can sort of see the movements. And I know when I say ancestors, obviously I'm using that term loosely. I might not be directly descended from these people, but we share common ancestors. And just so you know, there is like a chat room feature in here as well. So if you want to discuss your results with other people or collaborate, um, that's there. I haven't used it, but it's pretty cool. And the last thing is that you can compare your kit to other people's kits. This is only available with the upgrade that I have. Um, if you're just using the free one, you can only have one kit. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you found this video helpful. Please let me know in the comment section below if you decided to use My True Ancestry and if you did, what you thought of it. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of my future uploads. I hope that you're having a great day and thank you so much for hanging out with me. I will see you soon in my next video. Bye.